In a world where precision and finesse meet, one man has left a mark that will forever be ingrained in the history of pool. From humble beginnings, he honed his skills on neighborhood pool tables, displaying an exceptional talent that would soon captivate the world. Through unwavering determination and relentless practice, he rapidly ascended through the ranks, claiming numerous local and national titles. But his hunger for greatness was yet to be satisfied. Bursting onto the international stage, he showcased flawless technique and strategic brilliance. From the iconic World Pool Masters to the illustrious Moscone Cup, his exploits left his opponents stunned and fans in awe. His exceptional shot-making ability and unwavering calm under pressure solidified his status as one of the greatest ever to hold the cue. But beyond the accolades and triumphs, his life was not solely filled with glamour, bright lights, and success. His story is one of humility, pain, and resilience. This is a tale of a man who turned tragedy into victory. This is the story of Francisco Django Bustamante. On December 29, 1963, in Tarlac City of the Philippines, Francisco Bustamante was born. As time would have it, like every underdog, he wasn't born into a wealthy family. He was the youngest of eight children, and his father made a living out of building toilets and planting rice. Bustamante never completed high school. Instead, he focused his attention on playing pool. His sister had a small canteen that had a pool hall where jeepney drivers, tricycle drivers, hustlers, and even teen students would play both casual and money games. Intrigued by the game and the money, Bustamante, at the young age of 12, worked in racking, spotting, and refereeing the games played in the pool hall. Here, he would get small tips from the players who would win, but he was not contented with being merely a mediator for these players. At night, when the canteen had closed and there was no one left in the pool hall, Bustamante would rack the balls, pick up a cue, and practice on his own. This is where he would forge his hands and eyes to become the legend we know today. When he started getting good at the game, he became the player and not just the referee for small-time games. Because he didn't have a diploma, he never got any of the usual jobs. Instead, his only source of income would be from winning games in the pool. This kind of environment bred talent that had to achieve as close to perfection as possible because without winning, there would be no food on the table. He started hustling and participating in money games. He would often have a backer, someone who would fund or bet for him in order to play with higher stakes, where he would be given a small percentage of the wins. He soon dominated his city, and as he ran out of opponents in the local area and so, he went to Manila. The same happened here. He dominated the area, only rivaled by a few. Bustamante got to play with legends like the magician, Efren Bata Reyes, and the giant killer, Jose Amang Perica, in money games since there was no formal tournaments at the time. Here, the crowds would gather and the money pots were bigger. His demeanor and his habit of having a cigarette in his mouth during these early days gave him the moniker of Django the main character of an Italian classic movie. This name would soon be known internationally as he moved to foreign lands. Because of his exceptional skill at the table, a friend took him to Europe where he entered multiple tournaments. When they arrived in Germany, they happened to stop by a cafe with a pool table. 
He played a few games there and the owner was impressed with Bustamante's style of playing that he was made as the cafe's house pro. He was given a room of his own, a decent salary, and was even sponsored to play in various other tournaments in Europe, participating in countless European tournaments and playing pool as his daily job enhanced his skill to a new level until he finally felt worthy of competing in tournaments in the land of dreams, the United States of America. It didn't take long for Bustamante to leave his mark in the US. In 1998, he won the Camel Riviera 8-Ball Open, the Camel Tusa 9-Ball Open, and the Camel Columbus 10-Ball Open. He became the first player ever to win the trifecta in one season. After that year, he went on to finish third in the WPA World 9-Ball Champion in Cardiff, Wales, losing only to his fellow Filipino and the winner of the tournament, Efren Bata Reyes. Almost looks like he's playing every shot with Reyes to try and maintain that high focus that these players need. And I suppose in one sense, he has to do that. An absolutely incredible match is now over. Efren Reyes in scintillating form. A few months later, he went back to the US where he won the International Challenge of Champions. This is an annual nine-ball pool tournament held at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. As if that wasn't enough, three years later, he went, took part in it, and again won. In the year 2000, he went back to his homeland, the Philippines, where he won in the Motolite nine-ball tournament, beating Antonio Lining in the finals. Here, he won the largest cash prize offered in the Philippine-held tournament at $30,000 at the time of writing, that's about 1,658,265 pesos. Bustamante has made himself a legendary player at this stage, respected by fellow legends and feared by those new to the scene. He has won countless titles, he had beaten almost everyone there is to beat, and it seemed as if fortune always favored him. Till... In 2002, Django was just business as usual, participating in the World Pool Championships. But midway through the tournament, he received a phone call from his wife bearing news that would break any father's heart. His daughter, at only eight months old, had died due to an illness. Team officials said that he was free to take the first flight back home, thus forfeiting the tournament. Bustamante had to make a difficult choice, but perhaps for the love of the sport, the glory of his country, and the honor of his daughter, he opted to stay and fight. With grief fueling him, he played like a monster on the table. Bustamante managed to beat Antonio Lining in the last 16, Efren Reyes in the quarterfinals, and Ching Shunyang in the semifinals and finally reaching the finals. Here, he faced the greatest American pool player at that time who most considered the final boss of most tournaments. He was up against Earl Strickland, the two-time champion of the tournament. It was a great showdown between the legends, but Earl Strickland ended victorious with a final score of 17-15. This may not have been the fairy tale ending his countrymen had prayed for, but this loss did not break Bustamante. After all, this wasn't going to be the only tournament of 2002. With the hunger and drive unlike any other year, 2002 is the year Francisco Bustamante showed what peak skill in pool looked like. After the tragedy and the second place finish in the World Pool Championships, 
Bustamante went on to dominate and win tournaments such as the Peninsula Nine Ball Open, Gabriel's Las Vegas International Nine Ball Tournament, the IBC Tokyo Nine Ball International, and the All Japan Nine Ball Championship. Additionally, he triumphed in the Sudden Death Seven Ball Tournament, dedicating his victory to his beloved daughter. You're going to know if this goes in or not. This remarkable series of accomplishments led to his well-deserved recognition at the AZB Billiards 2002 as the Player of the Year. That year solidified his status as one of the greatest to ever do it. But his career didn't end here. He went on to win the World Pool League of 2004. In 2007, he went undefeated in the United States Pro Tour Championships held at the Normandy Casino in Los Angeles, California. I'm here to win. You had your fans here supporting you all week long, and you didn't disappoint them at all. How do you feel? Well, you know, I feel great, and uh, it's, this is amazing uh, to win uh, this match against Archer, you know, because 6-2 in alternate break, you know, and this is tough to win. And I think this is a blessing for me, you know. Because On 2006 been, uh, and 2009, he teamed up with Efren Bata Reyes in the World Cup of Pool, where they both won, becoming the first duo to win the tournament and twice. And just got to give Efren an easy shot and then look at him and mock him in the face and say, I gave you an easy shot now. That's as easy as he's going to get. That's as easy as he's, as he's going to get. There it is, this nine, how fitting, the legend. Yeah, you told him you have extension if you want to use it. <laughs> the crowd has to settle down this yeah. for the 2009 PartyCasino.net World Cup of Pool. I told you it's in the season element. Team Philippines. Efren Bata Reyes and Francisco Jungo Bustamante bring home the gold. They win the 2009 PartyCasino.net World Cup of Pool. Finally, on July 27, 2010, Francisco Bustamante, along with Terry Bell and Larry Hubbard, founders of the American Pool Players Association, were elected to the Billiard Congress of America's Hall of Fame and inducted on October 21, 2010. He was the second Filipino to be inducted into the Hall of Fame only after Efren Reyes. Despite being a Hall of Famer, we still see him compete today in multiple tournaments, usually teaming up with fellow Filipino pro Efren Bata Reyes. They continue to represent the Philippines despite their old age, perhaps because they remain competitive against newer generations of players. Francisco Django Bustamante may no longer be at his peak, but there is no question that it would be difficult for a new breed of players to ever compare to what he has done for the sport. Django will always be remembered as one of the best pool players ever produced by the Philippines but he was never renowned for being the one and only greatest. That title was reserved for his close friend, a teammate he played with in countless tournaments, the magician Efren Bata Reyes. If you want to see a video about Efren Bata Reyes, hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss it when we release it.